in this world are the opinions of a critic controlled by some butthurt individual or group is it like a raging fanboy yelling into a computer screen at least it is true that man has no control even over his own review Guy, I'm here today to review the anime classic Berserk. Now, Berserk basically tells the story of Guts, a young swordsman who, after being defeated by another young and very skilled swordsman named Griffith, joins his group of mercenaries known as the Band of the Hawk. And over the years, he helps them win battles, build their reputation, as well as helping their leader reach his goal and dream of owning his own kingdom. Oh, and also deal with some crazy supernatural shit later on. Interestingly enough, I was introduced to the world of Berserk not by a friend or a subscriber, but by the hilarious abridged series made by HBI 2K. And if you haven't seen that abridged series, it is a must see. And I'll put a link in the description that I'll send you to a playlist that has all of the episodes. Go watch it. It's really well done. It's freaking hilarious. And after watching the series, I kind of get more of the references that he made in the abridged series. And for years, I've been meaning to watch the original series, but much like Cowboy Bebop, never really found the time nor the drive to check it out. But now that I'm doing Classic Month, now I have an excuse to check it out. And so after seeing all 25 episodes, what do I think of it? Well, let's find out. Now I won't sit here and pretend that the animation was great or even half decent. It's not. It's very, very low quality, and I'll go into more detail on that later on. But what I will give praise to is the glorious artwork done for the series. It's very detailed, very striking, and it's minimalism done right, as these small scenes can speak so many volumes about what is going on and the tension in a scene. I mean, it just looks really good, guys. The only issue I have with these drawings is that they kind of just feel like they were just taken right out of the manga, but not turned into the visual format of the manga, which is disappointing. But again, they might have had budgetary issues dealing with that. But still, the artwork is great. Another striking element in this anime is the music, which can range from being sad and poignant, like Guts' theme, to energetic and thrilling, like Forces, to dark and ominous, like the music that plays in the final two episodes. It really complemented and added to the scenes. One element that I found surprisingly good, especially given the time that it was released, was the English voice acting done for the series. Now granted, I do have issues with the English dub, but that's more on the technical side. The voice actors and actresses really delivered in their roles, bringing some characterization and personality to these characters, adding some humor and depth and emotion through their voice work. I really praise the voice acting done by the guy who voiced Guts and Casca, who I thought did the best job out of everybody. And especially at the time that this anime was released, which was like the late 90s, early 2000s, man, this is some really solid voice work. It's not phoned in or half-assed. They legitimately put effort into their performances. And it's actually quite shocking to discover that some famous voice actors provided voices for minor characters in this anime. Like, did you know that Sean Schimmel, the voice of Goku, voices a character named Gaston in the anime? I was totally surprised to hear his voice coming out of another character. Not to mention, it makes so much sense why HBI 2K kept saying that his name was Goku in the abridged series. Like, I was like, why do they keep calling him Goku when his name is Gaston? And now, it makes sense. Not only that, but Rachel Lillis, the voice of Misty, voices Princess Charlotte in this anime as well. Interesting factoid. Next, we have the story, which is very well told and keeps your interest throughout. I can honestly say that there was never a moment in the series that I found really boring or useless. I felt like every episode had a point. And most of the series does take place in a medieval setting. It's only much later that we start to tackle the more supernatural fantasy elements. But even the medieval elements of the anime, ranging from the warfare, the various nations, the politics, backstabbing, betrayal, and discussions that happen frequently throughout the series, all of those are not only well handled, but again, they spike your interest and shows you a fully fleshed out and realized world. And at times in the anime, I shit you not, 
I felt like I was watching an anime version of Game of Thrones. I mean, not only does it take place in a medieval setting, but all the scheming, plotting, backstabbing, murder, lust for power. I mean, how is that not Game of Thrones in a nutshell? Hell, there's even a character whose name is Minister Foss, I believe, who I swear to Jeebus looks just like Lord Varys from Game of Thrones. Bald head and everything. Not only that, he shares many similar character traits with Varys, being sneaky and conniving, always hiding in the shadows and coming up with these devious plans of how he can like control the realm and manipulate different people. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if they referred to him as a spider, or even if George R. R. Martin was inspired to create the character of Varys based off of Minister Foss, as he came first before Varys. The story also touches upon various themes, ranging from friendship, belonging, and finding one's purpose to some darker ones ranging from lust, jealousy, envy, and hatred. I mean, the anime story does not stray from darker elements. I mean, there are moments where we learn about characters' backstories and how they got raped by other characters or almost raped or physically assaulted or beaten upon. I mean, it gets pretty heavy, guys. I mean, really, really heavy. And that's not even talking about the last two episodes. And then we got the characters, the ones that we follow throughout this story. Most of them I thought were really likable. They got some really good development. I love the development that they give Guts, Casca, and Griffith, our three main characters. You learn a lot about them and what they want in life. I especially like the development that they give Guts. I mean, he starts off as a guy who doesn't really have any real passion. He doesn't care about anybody. He's kind of like this lone warrior. And then he joins the Hawks after being defeated by Griffith. And he kind of builds a relationship with the Hawks, which I actually found very interesting and surprising. This character, who cared nothing about other people, actually gives a damn about this company of mercenaries. That's actually really cool. And the existential dilemma that the character faces in the anime is extremely intriguing and very relatable. As the character tries to find purpose in his life, what is he doing? What does he want to do? What is his dreams and aspirations? That's very relatable for many people, as we all struggle to find our identities and find out what our purpose is in life. Hell, every day I try to figure out what my purpose is in making all of these shit videos. And that just makes his character much more deeper and more complex than just a guy wielding a sword killing people. But I figured out why the series is called Berserk. I mean, when this guy goes on a killing rampage, he goes on a killing rampage. He goes literally berserk. Like, he goes ham on fools. Casca was also a very interesting character to me. And being a female warrior, she had to deal with a lot of sexism and a lot of people treating her like shit. And I loved how she handled herself and presented herself. She was a warrior woman and she didn't take shit from no one. And I really liked the relationship that they built between Guts and Casca. It felt organic, it felt real, and it felt tender. I just felt like they really bonded well with each other and I loved their relationship. And then... We have Griffith. Now many of you are well aware of my thoughts and feelings regarding this character and if you're not, let's just say I'm not too fond of this character and his actions later on in the series. But I also mentioned that he is a deep and complex character and I still stand by that statement. If there's one praise that I could give this character is that he pursues his dreams and aspirations with no fear and with such conviction that you can't help but look up to the guy and want to follow him. I understand what makes him such a great leader and why the Hawks are so loyal to him. I mean, he just has that charisma. There's no denying that Griffith was a born leader and had things gone his way, he would have made an excellent king, but yeah. The other supporting characters like Judo, Rickett, Pimpin, Gaston, they were solid. The one character from the Band of the Hawk that I really couldn't stand was Corcus. I mean, this guy was just such a pain in the ass all the time, 24-7, and he always gave Guts shit. And reasonably so. I mean, the first time he meets Guts, Guts does kill a bunch of his friends and fellow Hawk members. So I can understand why he has such a chip on his shoulder. But I mean, come on, over three years and you still have not let go of your grudge over this guy? Like, come on, get over yourself. And I understand what his character's purpose is. He's supposed to be that kind of small antagonist for Guts' character. He's the guy that always gives him shit. He always rags on him and he just outright hates the guy. You need a character like that. It makes a lot 
lot of sense. But he just kind of pissed me off. Like, Corcus just seemed like such a downer, and he just was arrogant and pompous. And even though he does have some sort of development later on in the series, I'm like, I still fucking hate you, man. And finally, the moment that will go down in infamy as one of the darkest moments in anime history. The last two episodes of Berserk, known as the Eclipse. Dear Lord. Like, I, I'm utterly speechless about it. it. It's so hard to talk about because it is without question one of the most disturbing, heartbreaking, and tragic scenes I have ever witnessed in an anime. I don't want to give it away for anyone who hasn't seen it, but when you get to the last two episodes, guys, like, fair warning, there is some disturbing imagery in the final two episodes. Like, really disturbing. Like, scarred for life disturbing. But I will say that it does set the stage for a much more interesting story arc later on in the Berserk series that I can't wait to see more of. Now, though I got a kick out of this anime to a certain degree, I did find many glaring issues with it. One of its biggest deals with its animation, which I'm willing to give some slack considering the time it was released, which is 1997, and the fact that it might have had an extremely low budget for its animation, so they had to resort to using limited and recycled animation. I mean, that happens quite often in anime. But I still have to call them out because of how lazy and sloppily they handled it. I mean, sometimes they resorted to using very limited frames and recycled animation up the butthole. In fact, there's moments in the anime that really piss me off when you see characters, they're on a backdrop. And if you look closely, like look at this scene right here. You see the character walking, you see Guts walking. Do you notice something weird about him walking? Like the fact that he's not casting a shadow? Yeah, there are many scenes in the anime where characters are literally standing on the ground where it's clearly daytime and the sun is high up in the air and they cast no shadow. They couldn't even draw or animate shadows on the ground for the characters. Now, I will admit that the animation does improve as the series goes on, but not by much. Not by much. In fact, the only time I ever saw shadows being casted on the ground was in episode 19 or 20 when Guts and Griffith have their final confrontation. That's the, last, that's the only time I ever saw shadows on the ground. I'm like, holy shit, you couldn't even animate shadows? I mean, say what you want, but that right there is pure laziness. But the shadows weren't the only things that they were lazy with. They were also lazy with the character designs, as many of the background characters all looked the same and were poorly drawn. I mean, guys, I know you have a very limited budget, but at least show that you gave a damn. At least show that you were trying to put some effort. I mean, shit. Now, earlier, I made mention that I had some issues with the English dub for this anime, but it more or less fell on the technical side of the dub, and not so much on the voice actors themselves, who did solidly with their performances. And what I meant by that is that there's some poor-ass lip-syncing and ADR work done for this anime. And granted, I know this was made in the early 2000s, so we still were kind of learning how to improve with the lip-syncing and ADR work, but I mean, it's really shoddy. There are scenes where characters' mouths are moving, it's clearly noticeable, but no dialogue is coming out of their mouth. It comes like five seconds later or like two seconds later. It's, there's a lag between the mouth movement and the dialogue. And I'm like, oh God, no, no, just, oh God. Terrible lip syncing. Not only that, but this anime has some atrocious sound design and mixing. Like there are scenes that are just dead silent. They added no extra noise in the background, even though there's so much going on in the scene. Or sometimes they would try to put sound effects for like someone unsheathing their swords, and it would sound so quiet and so dainty as if it would they were pulling out like a small sword. Like there's this one scene where Guts picks up his sword and it makes like a small shink sound and it sounded like he was pulling out a really small dainty sword but that's not what his sword's like it's big it's massive it's large and it's heavy why couldn't you do a whoosh kind of sound effect it was just really shoddy 
sound design, and mixing. Some of the characters that were introduced in the anime, I wish they could have developed a little bit more. Like Judo. I would have loved to learn more about Judo. I mean, we do learn that he did, like, hang out with a group of actors, I believe is what he said, but, like, what was his life like before he met the Hawks and all that stuff? I would have loved to learn more about that, or even more about Pippin or Rickard. Like, where did Rickard come from? Is he, like, the son of one of the members of the Hawk who, like, died and now he just sticks around with the group because he has no other family? Like, what is his story? I want to learn more about it. Hell, if we could give Corcus a backstory, I think Judo, Rickard, and Pimpin are more than deserving of backstories. And my final issue with this anime, coincidentally, is with the final episode. Not because of how gruesome it was, but because it ends on a goddamn cliffhanger! I hate animes with incomplete stories! Like, it literally just ends where Guts is like walking off into the distance, off on his journey, and we don't even have any resolution to what just occurred, what just happened, all that stuff. It's just left in the air and you're just wondering what the fuck just happened. And I hate animes that end with so many questions than answers. It is the literal definition of a go read the manga type ending. And you all know how I feel about shit endings like that. Those endings make me go berserk! But fortunately, they did remake the series into a movie trilogy, and I've heard news that they're actually making a new berserk anime series coming out this summer. So, I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see more of this world. Like, really, it's just so interesting. But I hated how this series ended. But overall, besides its many flaws, Berserk is still a well-told, engaging, thrilling, exciting, and entertaining anime with great characters, a compelling story, and is definitely an anime that all anime fans should at least experience one time. And that's why I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 stars. I definitely think that it's worth watching, and if you haven't seen it yet, give it a watch. Although again, fair warning, be careful with the final two episodes. It can scar you for life and it probably will. But anyway, what did you guys think of this anime? Did you love it to death? Do you think it's one of the greatest animes ever made? Or did you find it really boring, dull, you didn't like the characters, and you just couldn't get into it? And if you have seen the final two episodes of Berserk, I would love for you to share your experience with it in the comments below, and also let me know what is a moment in an anime that completely scarred you for life? For me, it was a moment in Green Green that I will never forget when these three fuckers were stuck in a humid closet and started hallucinating. And one thing led to another. That's all I'm going to say about that. And I never want to think of that scene again. So comment below and let me know and stay tuned. Got some reviews coming your way. Got some interesting videos. Hopefully, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And this Friday will be my Captain America Civil War review. So stay tuned for all that. And until then, guys, if you would like to see more videos on this channel and be a part of the Black Critic crew, please hit that subscribe button below. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. And I'm Tony Wall II, the lone warrior going on his journey as the Black Critic guy. Till then, peace, YouTube. Hi.